Hello, good afternoon. Welcome back to Simply Greg's EV. We're just here at an urban EV charging site in Montreal in a very densely populated area. I figured it's time to do an update on the state of urban charging in the city. So we're going to go check out a few DC fast charging sites in more populated areas, not the usual right off the highway stuff. And we're also going to check out any improvements on AC charging. So let's get into it. Let's check out this site here and we got plenty more coming. This is a, what I would say, your typical circuit electric urban DC fast charging setup. These 24 kilowatt posts are becoming quite popular. These cables are rated for 65 amps. These are Anthenol connectors, yeah, 65 amps. And you're starting to see more of these in areas that have restaurants, like there's a St. Hubert right there. Actually, they have a whole fleet of electric vehicles there as well. And there's an Escalade IQ there uh, as there as well. So you're starting to see these more in areas where there's amenities, restaurants, um, hospitals, clinics, arenas, pools, all of that stuff is up over there. So when you're not in a rush, these actually work really, really well and they're becoming more and more popular. I've been plugged in here for about uh, six minutes already pulling 17 kilowatts, that's perfect. And we have our usual ABB Terra 184 on a power split. So you're looking 90 kilowatts to each. And you also have your I believe that's ABB Terra 120, 124. And this has your usual Chatamo on it. Because we are in Quebec, there is a lot of Chatamo cars still left because we were one of the first adopters of electric vehicles here. So you still see a lot of legacy equipment handing around. But this is your typical urban charging EV type setup. Even by my house, this is what you see. I don't live too far away from here, but this is what you'll see. You'll see your lower power DC fast chargers and you have your higher power equipment here. This is becoming very, very popular. And as I said, there's kind of EVs every here, sorry, everywhere here. So we're just charging up the Fiat. Um, I mean, St. Hubert, they were one of the first places to start putting in EV charging years ago as a way to get you to the restaurant. And they have a whole fleet. They have the Blazer, they have the Kia Nero's and there's that Escalade park there. So this is one of the first sites that we're going to visit, as I mentioned, We'll be visiting a couple DC fast charging sites, but I also wanna go see what there is in terms of larger AC charging sites, curbside. Curbside here in Montreal is very large. And I also feel that that's one of the most overlooked areas of EV charging is the lower power equipment or the curbside equipment. So we'll go check that out. We'll get unplugged here and we'll go see what we find. Just going to get unplugged here and we'll go. Perfect. And it unlatched right away. There you go. Not like the usual 25 minutes on the uh, Fiat to get unhooked. So we'll get back on the road and we'll go check out more EV charging sites here in beautiful Montreal. Well, not that. I wish they would clean the cobwebs off of that. So now this is more the true urban charging, the AC charging. So these are 6.2 kilowatt flow dispensers curbside. There's two per post there's another two over here so your total of four now these are pretty much everywhere in montreal these cost a dollar an hour and you're getting 6.2 kilowatts i believe some will do 7.2 but not these ones so these are actually made here by flow all your electrical equipment in here your panel so this panel is supplying these two and it's also supplying those two again uh 208 to 240 volts 60 hertz 200 amps so when all of these are on there is a bit of power sharing going on but this is your typical urban ev charging experience here and again super cheap to use i also know what the comment section is saying now why aren't these ones being used and how come there's no one here well it's also the middle of the day it's 2 p.m on a monday but i guarantee you these at nighttime are all full so we shall go check out another site like this as well to show you that it's not the only one but if you've been following this channel for quite a while you already know that and this is a densely populated we're at another one of those dc fast charging sites about five kilometers away from the other one that we visited we're at a grocery store so you can charge up at your gross while doing your groceries these are 40 cents a kilowatt hour so not bad but what's cool about these ones now is these add energy flows they have the nyax payment terminal on it so you could pay with all your usual um 
cards, Apple Pay, through, through Circuit Electric, through Flow's own app. So these are becoming very popular here. I'm not a fan of 100 kilowatts. I think it's a bit too slow in this day and age. I would have preferred to see something maybe two times charge point, 200 kilowatts. Because now that Volvo Pol via Polestar, sorry, via Polestar is about to, to uh, plug in and he's only going to be getting 90 kilowatts out, out of this. But again, super cool. Plenty of charging for everyone. I also wish they would just put in uh, garbage cans so there's no garbage around or people would take their garbage. So just pointing that out that there's really no shortage of EV charging here. It's everywhere, especially with DC stuff, uh, level two stuff, it's everywhere. This was just, uh, I saw it on the map so I just decided to stop by because it's a new installation and new installations are always cool to uh, to uh, check out. So here's another urban DC fast charging site, very similar to what we saw earlier. You have your Terra 184, which is pretty common here in Quebec. This is some of the highest speed stuff you'll see. There's a couple 350 kilowatt dotted around. But again, urban area, restaurant, lots of housing. This is a municipal parking lot. We got the Fiat plugged in to the 24 kilowatt. These are, as I mentioned already, becoming very popular. There's a lot of these going in in place of level two charging. And we'll go over to this side. And you got your legacy Add energy, 50 kilowatt, 100 kilowatt, which never puts out 50 or 100. They do about 88, and these ones will do about 43, 44 tops. But again, this is your urban EV charging site, densely populated area. You have your, there's a Chevy Bolt there. There's actually an F-150 Lightning. Very EV-ish here. Uh, that's been smashed. There's a Kona there as well. As that UPS truck pulls out, usually we're doing this and there's construction. I'm surprised for a street of Montreal, there's no uh, cones. And you have, uh, again, you have your level two charging there. But these are sort of everywhere here, as you've seen in our videos. These are very common, common setups. And these are very important to have in an area like this that's densely populated but also has pretty high utilization. I'm pretty sure right now there's not much going on. It's about the middle of the day, but these will get busy around 5, 6 p.m. and in the morning time. One thing we don't really do here all that often here in Quebec is do these massive European EV charging sites. Um, we're focused more on kind of good coverage where off a highway you'll see four chargers the next exit will have like six the next exit will have an hour four there are a few big sites we've been to them we've been to uh, saint louis de blanc four there's a few more sites like that, that that are opening up but we're really concentrated on this close proximity with ev charging here if you're from quebec or you've been here you know exactly what i'm talking about where it's kind of slaughtered in everywhere areas like this in the back of a restaurant you'll have four posts the large sites are quite rare here, as I said. St. Louis de Blancfort will actually go visit a large level two AC charging site. We'll go visit that next, but I just want to point that out that here we really focus more on the uh, smaller sites, but excellent coverage. So you'll have a site like this here. The first site we went to go visit in Verdun is about five or six kilometers from here. Then you'll have another site like this in about number four or five kilometers. So they're kind of in this 10 kilometer radius maximum there's always some sort of ev charging that's going on and that's kind of the way it is here off uh, highways as well uh, i know we focus a lot on on uh, on the highways that's why i want to focus more on on this aspect i wanted to revisit it because i don't think i gave a good example in, in the first video i made but again very very focused on coverage versus having a lot of it in one random central area where now you'll come out to this area, you'll have another one in 5K and so on and so forth. So we'll get unplugged here. We'll go visit one more site and I think we're going to wrap up the video. But I just want to show everyone that there are places here uh, in Canada that have excellent EV infrastructure. Or if you're watching from Europe or if you're watching from the United States, wherever you're watching from, there are places that have good EV charging coverage. And this is one of them. We might not have the highest speed equipment at times. Uh, I've been very critical of that quite often on this channel but it's one of those things that i say like, well would you ever have a 50 kilowatt or nothing at all i'd rather take the 50 to be honest with you so let's go check out that next site let's go now i actually came here to the rem station in brossard yes i know this is a suburban area but i wanted to make this the last stop so these are 60 60 level 2 
6.2 kilowatt charging here. There is one slight issue though. These are at $10 per session because you're right next to the terminal. However, this area is getting really, really dense in terms of um, condos and apartments that are being built. And also in the winter time, I think sometimes I would pay that $10. But yet you have 60 level two chargers here. Look, they go on from one end right to the other. And of course, as we get closer to the terminal is when it starts getting busier. We'll just jump down up here on the sidewalk. Again, perhaps not the cheapest price for terms of EV charging, but it is here. It is here to use. I always said EV charging can't be free, otherwise it will be abused. But this parking lot does have free spots and spots where you have to pay around, I believe, $10 a day. So they kind of matched it with the EV charging. I maybe would have put it at $5 per charging session. You could sit here all day if you want, so that works out. But again, just a lot of EV charging. Like I said, 60 EV chargers here. Level 2, 6.2 kilowatts. This is actually one of the largest level two sites in Quebec and in Montreal. And you see a bunch of EV diversity here at the entire EGMP lineup actually. So that's cool. But yeah, super. You get stuff like this when there is political will and investment. The government's been investing quite a lot of money over the years, billions of dollars into EV charging, into EV adoption. And this is what happens when those investments work out. You have people who actually want to drive EVs, you have infrastructure that's everywhere, not just, there's a lot of focus on the charging infrastructure off of highways and road tripping, but I often feel like the urban stuff, shopping malls, city streets, arenas, public transit, this sort of thing here is so overlooked. We spend so much time talking about DC fast charging and just highway infrastructure charging where you completely forget sometimes that yes, there is DC charging in urban centers. There is level two charging in urban centers. There's level two charging at airports here at the train station just south of the city where there's commuters going into town. It has to be a well-rounded network. It has to be a well-rounded system for it to work. If you focus on one area only, well, no one's really interested in, in uh, that. But if you make it work, if you make it easy to use, if you make it cheap, it ends up working fine. And here it's working great, yes. A lot of people talk about the tax credits and all of that, but you have to spend some money to get it adopted. And then word of mouth spreads, people buy EVs more and more. Even that's what happened in my family is I bought one, then my sister bought one, then my in-laws bought one, and then everybody started buying them. So when there's willpower and good word of mouth, this is the stuff that you get here. So I hope you enjoyed watching. We'll revisit this video perhaps in spring, but we'll add a bit of a twist to it. But uh, thanks for watching. And in the next video, we shall see you in Europe. Bye for now.